You know what time it is, UFC 268. I know where I'll be Saturday night, across the street at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. It is a phenomenal card. And joining me, the one and only Kyle Anthony, to be talking all things UFC, our UFC expert on the show. Kyle, great to see you. Good to see you, man. Good to have, uh, good to be here, man. All right, let's get into it. I'm actually going to start with the main event. We got Usman, we got Covington. It's a rematch. These two went almost the full five, and then Usman took them late. Ref called it off. It's a minus 310 right now at your local sports book in favor of Usman. When it's that big a juice, what do you do? Do you lean prop bet, or do you just plug your nose and say, I'm taking the guy who's on a heck of a win streak? Yeah, you know, this is a tough situation here because you really look at it. I mean, when you got a line this wide, you really got to look to the prop market. There's always going to be value there, definitely going to be value there. In this spot here, it's kind of the same thing. Listen, Usman is a deserving uh, favorite. There, there's no doubt about it. The guy has, you know, been on, he's been dominant. And the only thing here, now you're looking at a minus 310 with a plus 240. And this is a dog or pass straight for me in this spot. But when you're looking at props just in general or method of victory, you know, you had Shmayoff last week who was a minus 500. But if you looked at the inside the distance, you know, minus 170. So there's always value in the prop market. In this spot here in the main event, I got to say Colby is the spot here. It's well worth it at a plus 240. I, I just don't think that, uh, you know, Usman is deserving. Don't get me wrong, Alex. He's deserving of the big favorite line. But betting wise, we're not picking winners. We're looking for value. And that's the spot. So on that note, Kyle, is there a world where method of victory, which is a prop bet, of course, when you're dancing on UFC is something you're staring at for Usman versus Covington? Yeah, you know what? I think this is one where you had the last fight and there was there's just so much bad blood in this fight. And, and that's the great part about this fight. Everybody loves it because there is a lot of bad blood in this. But when you're looking at how this fight went, they went, you know, really, really strong in the early rounds. And normally that's kind of how Covington kind of melts his opponent. Same thing with Usman. They've got volume. They've got cardio. I like this spot here going the distance. You know, if you took a look at it, you know, really Covington, you know, going into that fifth round, that first one, Covington was probably winning 3-1 at worst 2-2 going into the fifth. So I think this has got value going the distance here. So I would even look for a little bit better, plus 460 on Covington to a decision. I like that spot also. Wow. Does Kyle know a guy who knows a guy over there? You're going <laughs> with Covington. Goodness gracious. All right. I'll marinate on it. Out the moment, I'm leaning Newsman, but I, I respect what you're putting down. Okay. Let's talk about the other big battle in this one. Another phenomenal rematch. Rose Namajunas, she ended Whaley's 21 in a row W fight win streak, and she did it in 78 seconds. She was actually, I believe, a two and a half to one dog. This is now closer to a pick 'em. How are you looking at this one? Give me some takeaways on this one. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, you've got the fact that, you know, Whaley is a monster. I mean, she went out there, knocked out Andrade, and then had a tight fight against Ioana, and then got knocked out here. We didn't really get to see the fight. And, and that's part of this, where now, obviously, the line's going to come closer. But to me here, if you can get a little bit of plus money on Rose in this spot, I like that spot here. I think that her movement... Her range is going to be kind of tough for Whaley, who is more of that bulldozer kind of thing. So in that first round, it could be a little bit tight, but I think that you definitely have a ton of value on Rose, on the champion. At, even if it's some plus money there, I like it. I think Rose is the side in this spot. Now, because it did end so quickly, Kyle, uh, is there a prop bet on this one? Because I actually like this ending in a KO, TKO one way or another. I think they're going to be coming out swinging. What say you on that side of things? 
Alex, I think we're on the opposite side again here. Uh, I think that this is another spot where both of these females, I think it's going to look kind of like Whaley versus Joanna, where it's going to be a lot of volume, a lot of pushing forward. But I think it's going to be more of a pitter patter from the outside. And that's where I think that Rose has the most success. I don't think she's going to go out there and throw another uh, head kick. That was uh, an insane shot, but she landed it. I don't think she's able to do that. I think she stands on the outside a little bit more as Whaley pushes forward. So I think if you're looking at, at Rose, you've got plus 380 on Rose via decision. I think that's value there. So I like her straight to win. Also, I think decision is a nice spot to sprinkle on top. Okay, okay. All right, now let's talk a little quantitative, qualitative. This is going down Saturday night at the world's most famous arena. Now, we remember beginning of quarantine, when these guys were fighting with no crowd, they went a lot longer. Then as soon as fans started coming in, a lot more knockouts, a lot more unders. Do you think, though, at MSG in New York City, that nerves will get to anyone or just the overall environment will make some sort of your mind change when it comes to firing on these bets? Yeah, I think definitely that that can be some. But for me, I more look at it as some of the newer fighters that maybe have came into the UFC during COVID in the apex. Nobody there. They've always fought on the regional scene. Maybe that's kind of something where here now they got something to prove. But a lot of these guys on the main card and even the prelims, the upper part of it, they've all been in these situations. So, yes, I, I think it can push definitely to your point. I think it definitely can push some certain action. But to me, I don't fully. I'm, I'm not really hammering that into my capping. Okay, let's get you out of here with this, Kyle. Appreciate all the insight. Are you parlaying anything this Saturday night? Or if not, you got another one for me I can pencil in. Well, I think the, the one spot really on the parlay side of things is I'm – you know, a lot of people love parlays. I mean, hey, who doesn't? And they make a lot of sense in certain spots. But in MMA – in the MMA, a lot of people really are pushing, uh, you know, you know, you know, looping seven or eight together. Two or three is a good spot. If I really feel like that I missed a number, that's normally where I want to parlay something. But the one spot that I like, everyone's going crazy about uh, Alex Perheya because he knocked out um, Israel Asanya. I think everyone's blindly betting that at minus 260. I think uh, Michaelitis at plus 205 is value. Four fights for Perheya in MMA. I don't think that's that great. He's been kicked boxing more is he ready for this fight i'm sure he is it's either poje is going to knock him out in the first round or i think michaelitis kind of drags this one out and i think he wins in a dirty fight i love it kyle anthony i hope you come back and talk some more with me i appreciate you